Hello, I'm Tanner Gaskis. Today we're going to walk through the different surfboards and quiver that I rode in Digital Surf Digital World. Kind of give a little bit more of a backstory to each board. Some of them have come from trash cans and some have come from the best shapers and glassers in the world. So it's great. Variety is the spice of life. Within the edit, I feel like there was a t it was really cool to kind of make that uh, collage of riding all the different kinds of boards. So this is, I only have two uh, kind of big wave rhino boards that are 10-2, and this is my West Coast California one, and I've surfed the Totos and Mavs on this one, and then the one in the movie is a red board that is basically the same shape as this, and that's where we're surfing on those outer reefs, Patrick and I. But as you can tell, this thing right here, my hand is literally, it's a, it's a cup full, the rail. I'm sure it's three and like almost four inches thick, but the board is, the board's really insane. I've caught in some of the craziest going straight speed, speed lines of my life. I like uh, having to keep the Vibe Live sticker right where my head goes when I'm paddling into them. Just making sure I'm in a good headspace before I do so. But it's fun. They're almost like family heirloom boards. And uh, I was really stoked actually on that, on that footage in the edit. I felt like that day specifically was one of the craziest big wave surfing days of my life. The conditions were flawless. Paddling out was this crazy, crazy thing where we had, it was all closing out. And I just remember it took us a long time to get out. By the time we got out, we were kind of like pretty nervous for sure and winded. Straight away, this big closeout set came and there was like probably 14 or 15 guys out and it took like, I think it was down to like three or four other people besides us out because everyone's leashes had snapped. So we were able to get a couple and then, I don't know, I think conditions kind of switched up and you don't really want to overdo a good thing on a big wave day. So yeah, I was just stoked and I hope you guys enjoyed that. That drop of Pat's is phenomenal. Like I can't even believe he knifed that. It reminded me of the Fiji one that he took a long time ago. So moving down, I, I brought this board out because um, I've been doing a lot with my photos and getting them glassed in on the boards. And this one's really special to me. That's my grandmother, Gia Dragodowskis from Lithuania. She was a pianist and uh, when she passed away, she left me some of her cassette tapes. So I just scanned the cassette tape and put it on the bottom of the board. And this kind of goes back to the uh, soundtrack of the movie because we used a lot of cassette stuff and just kind of a lot of different things I've collected. Although we didn't use Bubba's because it didn't really fit in the movie. So hopefully coming soon, you'll get to hear that. But this, this board is actually an MBM. Um, I ordered this one a little bit smaller, it's 5.9. And it's been really fun in the small stuff around town, like has a ton of speed, really forgiving. And even within the thruster shortboard realm, it's fun to like mix things up and not always just have like your generic size, which kind of brings me to my generic size, which is 5.11, 18 7 eighths, two and three eighths. This is a board and a model that I've been working on with Mike Andrews. I shouldn't say model, but it's, it's a heavily modified board and we call it the Hammer. I've been riding it for like the last two years now. And Mike, I live down at Oceanside, Mike shapes here, so I get to go into the bay a ton. Super nice guy, incredibly knowledgeable. This board is honestly the most forgiving, fun, fast surfboard I've ever ridden on. That's been fun, getting the photos put on the boards and just Kind of actually, I was psyched to make this like a scrapbook as well, so I painted all over it. Um, I hope you like the shortboard stuff in the edit. Uh, it feels like, to me, it's still a super important part of my life to be trying to push myself in the high performance realm. I really am inspired by the stuff I'm still seeing Dan Reynolds do. I loved Pentecostal, where Wade was at, and it just felt like I still really want to push myself in the level that I can go to. So. There was a heavy dosage of thruster in the movie, as there probably still always will be. Tons of hammer action in that edit. So now this is where I go to. And I snuck this. That's a spine tack. I sprayed it white. Just to keep everyone on their toes. This is the board I was trying the judos on. Um, this is a spine tech rocket wide modify. Um, but this thing is the most all around sort of get me in the water uh, surfboard. I seriously suggest the spine tech stuff. Uh, it just, it's, I don't know, it just makes it that much easier to get that initial pop going in those waves that have everything that you need, but it's really hard to get it going in the very beginning. Um, basically anywhere beach break wise in California, you're good to go on a spine tech. 
Um, I love them too because they hold up pretty well. I've had this one for like over a year or something and it still launches. So also very fun fact because we did it on a green screen in the edit. We're going to just pop in my fish beard right here on my hand because that's the fun way to do it. Um, the fish beard model just in general, that was the first, in the edit actually, that was the first time I had ridden that board. I really loved the outline. It reminded me of the uh, Tommy Peterson, Tom Curran uh, fireball fish because it just had the nose logo. It had everything going. It had a nice little kick. And when I got on it, the thing was like, it truly was so, so fast and high performance. Um, I know that they kind of changed a little bit of the neck beard to get to the fish beard. So if you already like that, then you're going to love this. Um, but it's funny, I, I actually kind of buckled that board and I didn't really ride it that much after that session. But really looking back on that edit, I was so stoked. That's at lowers. It really paired well with those open walls. You can get a ton of speed, hold your rail and then kind of fall back over almost as if it's a thruster. You know, sometimes the, the twin fin stuff, you skate a lot, you get all that projectile lateral speed, but it's kind of hard to get over your rails. So I don't know whether the tail coming in a little bit more narrow or thinner allowed you to get that phantom thruster feel. So I highly suggest the fish beard. Um, again, I'm not sure. I hope it's right here in my hand. Magic does exist, so enjoy. <laughs> but this one is, a, this is a funny story because, so Daniel Jones, came and he stayed at the house for a couple weeks when we first moved in. And we were watching all these old surf movies and it, we kept noticing that boogie boarders kept having their equipment on their back. And they would walk in and then they would, of course, they'd fire up their sleds out of their back. So we were like, could we do, like, that's so, like, how do you, oh, that's mind blowing. Can we shape a board that we could do that? And so Dan just said, hey, let me uh, order us a bag offline, which came in a couple days and, uh, he literally just laid, so he laid this down on the ground and then he put a, just a, a, rule, uh, a, a tape measure and he just went from here to there, here to there. So it, he basically shaped a square. Uh, <laughs> this board is so fun though. Uh, he said he put a brewer rail on it. So it's pretty thick. It's, I mean, it's not as thick as my 10-2 Mavs board, but it's got a lot of girth. But I love that he gave me the quad setup so I can get a lot of different options. I have so far ridden it, twin fins in the back, twin fins, twin fins in the back, nothing in the front, twin fins in the front, nothing in the back, but I haven't gone for like little guitar picks off the side, and I think that that could be the go, but I love this. You get little phantom channels, brings it in. This board is super fun. In the edit, because we, uh, we found some old footage that my mom had given us um, when I was riding a boogie board in the movie, and that was a really interesting time because I am pretty old, but I was, I think I was 14, but I had just broken my kneecap. So that actual session is the first time I'd gotten back in the water in like nine months. So I was frothing. So I hope that that was portrayed there. And too, I was just laughing. I was, I was thinking like, I wonder if people thought I was boogie boarding all the way till I was like 16. But the truth on that is that I had broken my kneecap in two places surfing and I couldn't surf during that time. So it was like the ultimate freedom to get on the boogie board. And I was just so stoked when I found that footage, it was like super special. So here's the final board. Um, legitimately, I found this in a trash can. <laughs> I don't know, it's totally watertight. This board, it says that it's a uh, 511MX. And so he, I don't know, so that's not 511, but it's cool. He must have put the boogie board tail on the bottom, cut it, and then re-glassed it. And then ah, that's the coolest looking little fin. Like this is such a treasure. I'm so stoked I found it. It was on a bike ride, which I never go riding my bike. And I was really stoked. I was laughing like, is that an omen that I should exercise more? Um, it's fully gunneled out in the middle. Uh, it, I haven't ridden it as a thruster, but I will say that that is enough fin and then you feel this rail in the water as you're traversing down the line it it goes way better than i thought it would go and it's not even that thick it feels like an alaya when i'm paddling it but when you stand up it's a treat to ride on you know when alex and i were looking at the footage we realized that there was a lot of different surfing going on a lot of different crafts and i felt like it was cool to celebrate that and just kind of do it in a way that was fun and true to us so i hope you guys really enjoyed it and I hope all of this gives a little bit more context and backstory to what you're watching and hopefully makes you want to watch it again because we had a blast making it. 
and I'm super thankful that you guys are watching it. So rock on. Thank you.